Hey, Clark here. While I've got my carburetor apart, I thought I would do a quick little tutorial. I know there's a bunch of people out there that are reviving these old KX500s or they've bought a used one and have maybe never played with a two-stroke before. So uh, let's do a quick carburetor tutorial, at least in an effort to get you a base point, a place to start from. So um, carburetor's obviously off the bike. The first thing is, um, get the bike warmed up at full temperature and check for your idle. Your idle screw is right here and that's going to affect the slide. So that's your idle um, screw. And the bike, you want to get it idling so that it will run by itself without having to blip the throttle. Now this next little screw right over here, this is your air screw. And your air screw should be out one and a half, one and three quarters turns. So to check it, you can see where you are now and you all you would do is like there's a half a turn there's one one and a half i'm like at one and three quarters or something like that so to back it out to one and a half wherever you want to start from half one one and a half and i'm going to one and three quarters so <clears throat> the air screw is really only going to affect your idle and you want to be at the lean best idle so with the bike idling, you would start to run that screw out a little bit. And if it starts to get erratic, really starts to pick up um, too much, you've got it too lean, run that air screw in just a little bit and that will get your idle set. Now, if it starts to, if it's idling, if it sounds good, but it's fast, take your idle screw, turn it out a little bit and lower your, your RPM some. But lean best idle is what you're after. Now, as you're going through the jetting uh, at idle speed, You've got air going through this hole and it's picking up the pilot jet from the inside. And that's all the gas and all the air that's getting into the engine until about eighth turn. At eighth throttle, this slide's gonna move, you know, just a little bit. And at that point, you're now gonna start sucking air in through the main body of, of the uh, carburetor here. And as this continues to go up, fuel from the main jet is going to be filtering up past this needle and into the engine. So you've got different things at play. When this is closed at idle, just the pilot jet and a little bit of air going through here. As this opens up, it's gonna lean out the pilot jet and the main jet is going to start to, to uh, add some fuel into it. So in terms of actually being able to affect how much fuel is going into the carburetor, it's the size of the pilot jet for the first part and then it's the size of the main jet. Now I'm gonna take the slide out of here and in case this, th this needs to be checked, what makes um, the needles on the carburetors different is really just this taper at the end. And this is actually a Honda needle. It is a N82M. Um, and it had a more aggressive taper. This is a six millimeter nut in here. When you take your throttle cable off, the cable is going to be going through the spring and you're going to have to pull this back all the way so you've got enough cable that you can push it down past this opening and then pull the cable out. So the reverse would be true when you're putting it on. You're gonna slide your spring over your cable. You gotta get the cable started in there, pull it up, it'll get, it'll get locked into there basically. And then you get your fingers out of the way and then this will slide down on top of there after you tighten it on your slide. So with the slide out, you can see here that needle is seated firmly into the bottom of the slide. So right now I am on the third groove and they they start at the bottom so one two three four five uh, in stock form on the stock needle they suggest the fourth groove and i'm actually going to move mine up to the fourth groove now my issue is, is that i'm riding at four to six thousand feet and i have to lean the engine out so imagine you take this clip off and when you take this clip off do it down low <laughs> do it with a really good pair of needle nose pliers in case you drop it, you're going to be able to find it because they, uh, they'll be gone forever if, you, if it flings off into the dirt or something. So imagine when you, low, when you raise this clip, the needle is now going to sit lower in the carburetor, lower into the main jet. So it's going to take longer, more throttle opening for this to lift up to let more fuel in. So just the opposite would be true if you thought you were running too lean pull the clip out, move it down, raises the needle, more gas flows through. Okay, now to get to the two jets, I've got this float bowl ready to come off. 
you've got four Phillips screws, and if the previous owner was a hack, they're all stripped, and you'll probably have to drill them out. <clears throat> Careful walking around with this part. You've got your float seat here, and it's a very tiny little, I can't see what I'm doing sideways, little tiny rod, this guy right here, that holds the float in. If you're walking around with a carburetor, you turn it sideways, this pin can fall right out. And again, if you drop it somewhere where you didn't know you dropped it, you'll probably never find it. They're pretty tiny. And then the other thing that can happen here is once you get this float off, you've got this tiny little seat, okay? And so there's a tab on the floats that's going through the little wire there, and that holds this guy on there. And then once once this is held on through that little rod, it can't it can't come out again. So this float seat controls the amount of fuel coming into the carburetor bowl. If the bike has been sitting for a long time, the gas has probably evaporated and the oil is left, and this could be very sticky. So this should move freely. There should be nothing holding this thing up. And nor should the actual seating area have any pits, um, any kind of obstructions. If it's not smooth, it won't seal the gas off. And if it's got crud on it, it's gonna be sticky and it's not gonna, it's not gonna open up to let the, the float bowl fill up with fuel. So once you've gotten this far, you're almost done. In this hole here, this is where the pilot jet is. In the book on stock, it says 60. I don't know anybody running a 60. Uh, because of my elevation, even at sea level, I'm running a 50, uh, 58. This is a 55 pilot, and the bike seems to run best at that level. And then your main jet, I did tighten that. That's a six millimeter. I'll need a wrench. And these numbers are stamped. Sometimes you've got to use a magnifying glass, particularly if they've been roughed up. But on the pilot jets, I don't think this is going to show on camera. Right there, you got a little marking and then it says 5.5. Five. Can you see that on there? Okay, so that's that's how they're gonna be stamped. And then on the main jets, turn them sideways and then you'll be able to see the number stamped in there. So this is a 162. And that's because of my elevation issue here. I normally run a 168 at sea level. Now this is all predicated on the fact that you're using synthetic um, oil. Do not use, if you can even find non-synthetic oils anymore. Make sure you're using a good synthetic oil. I like Dumontech. It's incredibly clean burning. Engine life is phenomenal with the Dumontech, but it's hard to find maybe on the internet. Uh, and the AMS oil is supposed to be pretty good. So um, make sure you're using synthetic and mix at 50 or even 60 to 1. If you're doing a lot of woods riding, not uh, full throttle racing type environment stuff, uh, 50 to 60 to 1. Uh, even under race conditions, you should be okay with that. I've done some really, really long, wide open, long hill climbs, third, fourth gear, and uh, I've never had any kind of engine issues at all. So that um, kind of concludes it. The higher the number with the jets, the richer they are, the lower, the leaner. Uh, these bikes should accelerate smoothly. They shouldn't have any burbles. If, it, if the bike tends to sound like it's loading up and then it goes, you're fat in that particular area and you'll just have to really kind of play with it. But in terms of being close, a 55, a 58 pilot jet, needle jet, third or fourth setting, and a main jet, 165 to 168, and you should be very close. And then it's just depending on what kind of riding you're doing, whether it's woods, flat out desert, uh, intermediate stuff, whatever. But uh, that will get you started. Good luck.